What's up, everybody? So, <laughs> if I don't have enough to do, I end up taking on more projects. <laughs> it's just kind of what I do, I guess. I think I got it from my dad. But, uh, so I was uh, watching some videos on uh, over lunch here today, and the, the Matt Moe's Outdoors show, his... Uh, channel I'll put a link down below to this video he threw a video up recently here where they were making a bunch of venison brats um, I was watching that that sounded pretty tasty I love venison but uh, I didn't get a deer this year so or ever that's coming in a later video but uh, so I was watching his video and my son my oldest son who's been in several of these has been asking lately if we can make beef sticks because he loves those uh, like Slim Jim type beef sticks. And I've been wanting to start carrying some summer sausage and eh, some stuff we want to do with the smoker. So as I was watching Matt and his uh, his buddies there making, uh, making brats today, it gave me the, uh, the, the idea that, well, you know, if I want to make sausages, maybe the place to start is with brats. Because I can start with just getting a sausage recipe down, and then I can deal with curing later. And I don't know. so, mm, yeah, uh, ideas happen. So I had to had to figure it out. So came home or uh, over lunch there, I was watching this. Decided, uh, did a little digging, found a uh, just ridiculously simple brat recipe. Uh, it's one meat. It's pork shoulder, pork shoulder, some spices, some beer. Uh, and call it good. So I figure I'm going to start simple, and I can add complexity as I go. But if I can get a, a basic, simple recipe for brats that that's good, and then I can play with it as we go forward, I think I think that'll be great. So borrowed a meat grinder from my folks, and picked up the the pork shoulder and the spices, and uh, I'll post the recipe down below. It is a jalapeno cheddar recipe, but. Uh, my Scandinavian taste buds don't always do so good with jalapenos, so I'm going to be a wuss and leave those out. Um, but uh, recipes down below, I'll show you. Um, I'm going to go, I got to get the, the pork shoulder cut up, got to get it through the grinder, and get the spices mixed up. Then tomorrow we'll put it in casings. So here we go, a new adventure. That's what this is all about. Let's have some adventures. pork all all cut up into pieces that will fit in the grinder, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, and it's been in the freezer for about 45 minutes or so just to keep everything nice and cold. So, here we go. I'll uh, get this slid on here. Let's grind some meat. That was easy. Show you what they look like here. There we go. Bucket full of ground pork. Now I'm gonna put this back in the freezer to get chilled again, because it heats up in the grinding, and we don't want that fat getting hot. And then I'm gonna go mix the spices. All right. So we got the meat ground. I've got the spices from the store that I'm gonna. Get all measured out. I'll show you those as we do it. But I want to show you what I think is going to be the key to this whole thing. Here, oh, we're getting in the dark. Don't mind me. I think the key is going to be this. Let me get it. Come on. Oh, let me adjust the camera. I'll show you. Here is the best part. Not only are some places say to mix with water, some say to mix it with beer. We're gonna mix with beer, but not just any beer. Stroh's beer, not the old Stroh's from the, what, I don't know, 80s it was big. Um, but new Stroh's, we're gonna use 
my homebrew. This one here is actually a dry stout. Cheers. For, uh, uh, that we made 50 gallons of it here a month or two back. So I'm going to use that for mixing the spices. Because why not? Um, yeah, I'll be back. We'll get. I'm going to get all the spices. We'll start mixing. Then we're going to let it sit overnight. Soak up all the yumminess. Ground. I got my beer for mixing here. And, well enjoying so i printed out earlier sort of my the recipe i'm going to use like i said i'm just i'm going super easy and simple on this one um so use that i'm going to measure everything into here and mix it with a little bit of beer pretty straightforward it's just salt sugar marjoram white pepper caraway seed coriander garlic powder and onion powder pretty straightforward easy stuff so i'm just going to go down my list here so two Tablespoons of salt right off the bat. Probably what makes it so delicious and why everything's better with a beer with it, right? But it seems like a lot of salt. Seriously, two tablespoons? Yeah, that's what it says. There's one. There's two tablespoons of salt. I don't know. That seems like a lot to me. But I guess if any of you guys have made brats before, if you've done it, make mixing your own spices, let me know. I don't know. Is two tablespoons of salt a lot? I guess now it's getting countered with a tablespoon of sugar. So I don't know. But there's the salt. There's the sugar. Uh, two teaspoons of onion powder. So... One, you can see I'm really measuring accurately. <laughs> two teaspoons of onion powder. Uh, two of garlic powder. One, two. Okay. One teaspoon of the white pepper. One teaspoon of white pepper. Half a teaspoon of coriander. Switch to my half teaspoon here. Now I did get the ground, I'm gonna use the pre-ground coriander on this one. I did pick up some regular coriander seed too. Um, I use this when I brew Belgian wits. Um, but I might, I don't know, next time I might try that instead of the ground stuff, we'll see. So half a teaspoon of coriander, um, half a teaspoon of marjoram, Get that in there. There we go. Half a teaspoon of marjoram. And finally, half a teaspoon of the caraway seeds. There we go. So that is it. And then it says to, to mix that in with a quarter to a half cup of beer or water so I don't no I don't I don't know if I should measure this whatever let's measure why not there's a quarter cup let's see how well that mixes up <laughs> Slurry of deliciousness. Oh my goodness, look at that. I'm going to add just a hair more. I want this to be wet enough to really mix in with the meat well. There. Okay. That's mixed. I'm going to grab the meat out of the freezer. We'll mix it all in. Be right back. And clean up all my spices. Pulled the meat out of the freezer. Got my... Slurry of deliciousness. I'm just going to pour that right over the top here. And then I'm actually going to use a little bit more of the beer to rinse all the goodness out of here. Now we're just going to mix to combine. Uh, my hands are washed and clean. Right? That is important because especially if you're going to be if anyone other than you is going to be eating this, 
They really, they don't want your nastiness. Uh, but as far as I understand, now again, this is my first time, so I don't know what I don't know what I'm doing. But from what I've read, and from what I hear and understand, the goal here is we just want to get that all those spices and deliciousness as evenly distributed as we can. But we don't want to overwork the meat. The more you work the meat, it's going to be tough. You end up having uh, meatloaf dogs instead of brats. So I think that is good. Right there. Mixed, it's mixed together. So I'm going to cover this. Actually, I'm going to add just a hair, a dribble more beer after I wash my hands again. Then I'm going to cover it and put it in the fridge overnight. Let all those flavors mix and absorb and meld. And then tomorrow, after school, after work, we'll... Uh, We'll actually put them in the casings. All right, so on the way home, I got casings from Hy-Vee. Uh, they're at the deli counter, so, or not the deli counter, <laughs> that'd be weird, the meat counter. And I asked them and they just went back and bought, my wife's laughing at sausage casings at the deli counter. Um, but they just grabbed them out of the stock that they use and I know they make yummy, yummy brats. So that bodes well. Uh, they gave me two strands, chunks, things. I don't know what you call them. Um, but the guy recommended that I take... Oh! And... <laughs> How'd that go, honey? Oh my god, it looks gross. <laughs> But he, the guy recommended that I take take him in this bowl of water and sort of rinse him for good reason. But what the heck? Now I, got, I can't find the end. Well, it must be, it's got to be here somewhere. This is a pain. Here, there it is. Okay. So I'll take the end and somehow I gotta get this open. Honey, what's that made out of? Um, my wife just asked what it's made out of if you didn't hear. Um, it's made out of sausage casings. You just don't want to tell me. That's right. I don't want to tell you. I know what's made of. Sausage casings. No. Please tell me. I'm not sure I'm going to. Is it intestines? It might be. That's disgusting. Whatever. You've been eating them your whole life. You had no problem with it before. That's yeah. Bad. Now she's not going to eat them. Like, you, they're gross! I'm going to bed. <laughs> okay. So anyway, the guy at hy said to just kind of open it up and just kind of go like this to scoop water into it. And then just kind of run the water through to clear out the inside. For good reason. Because, as my wife was so disgusted by, they are intestines, which can have some very specific nasties in them, so it's good to rinse them. Casing. Eh. Okay, so that's rinsed. Now... I'm gonna just angle that over the edge so I can keep it found. Um, now it's gotta go on the stuffer. So I'm gonna adjust the camera. Wish me luck. I've heard this is the hard part. All right. So the, one of the shows we like to watch here at home is Worst Cooks in America. And one of those episodes they had to wrap sausages or stuffed sausages, and the hosts, 
suggested to the people on the show that they just oil this a little bit. Uh, my wife is telling me how she heard that one too. So now I gotta find the opening for this again. Uh, fine. Oh, oh, did I get it? I got it. Got it. Okay, and then this. goes on here. And I think part of the key, oh, look at that. Okay, so I'm already learning, right? That's the whole idea. I, I like to learn how to do new things. So on here, the end of the casing was coming, was off kind of to the side and it was making it really hard to put on. But once I if I keep the, if I keep where the casing is coming off somewhat centered, it goes on way easier. Look at that. Oh, that's incredibly, incredible how much of a difference that makes. Oh, this isn't even so hard. Now watch me mess it up, but so far this is like easy. Look at that. I got a sausage stuffing wizard. I must be doing something wrong. <laughs> it's too easy. Gotta be doing it wrong. But it's easy enough so far. You figure it out and then it's probably not so good. Look at all this. I don't, that's not gonna go. Well, it's not gonna have room for all that. I gotta cut it. I'm gonna cut it here. I'm gonna grab, a, grab my scissors. I'm gonna cut it here and tie it off. And we're gonna try. We're gonna see how it works. And maybe I'll end up having to put more stuff on there again. But okay, so I cut it and they say to tie it. I guess I should have asked. I assume I can just do a simple little, like I'm tying my shoes knot. I hope so, because that's what I'm going to do. And then we'll slide that the rest of the way on. Hey, get out of here. This isn't for you. All right. We got the casings on there. The casings on there. So here's my... Meat, and it smells good. There's the meat. It was, it's been sitting in the fridge overnight, soaking up all that deliciousness. So I'm gonna start packing this in. And then, I don't know, let's try it. Are we ready to try it? I got meat, I got the casing, it's on the end. It looks like there's an air bubble. I don't know if that's gonna be a problem or not, but let's try it. All right. this way. So this one I gotta twist the opposite way. Well, uh, not bad for my first go. 
¿Qué? I really see where this would be easier with a second person. If I could have another person feeding the meat into the machine, so all I had to do was fill them. It'd be a lot easier. Shoot, which way did I twist that one? Nope, wrong way. That's a good looking one though. That looks pretty good. Ah, this one got all that air bubble in it. Fuck it. I'm just gonna pinch that, cut my losses with that one, and go on to the next. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six, well, okay. I think I got four good ones, two okay edible ones, and one that's more air than anything else. But um, I'm gonna wash my hands, and then the rest of the meat, I'm gonna split into some variety here, and I'll show you that when I get back. Now that I'm kinda getting the hang for it. All right, so. I got some some uh, added wonderfulness for these, because like I said, I want to try doing three different kinds here. Um, so I've got some Swiss cheese and portobello mushrooms that I just cut up real small and find the smallest chunks I could chop it into really without, honestly, I didn't really try that hard. But So they're not super consistent, but anyway, Swiss, Swiss cheese and... Portobello mushrooms, so mushroom Swiss, and then this is just some sharp cheddar that again I chopped up. And so I'm just kind of going to mix um, that the, the cheese and the mushrooms in with these two sets here to make. So I'll have some cheddar, cheddar worst, some cheddar brats. And swap my bowls and mushroom Swiss. So my kind of my long term goal here is I'd really like to come up with just a simple base recipe for the, for the meat and the spices and whatnot. That's good, that I like, that turns out well, that my family will eat, and then be able to play with it. So have um, mushroom Swiss, have cheddar, have wild rice, have have whatever, you know, have all these different things. You just, I'm using my chin to adjust the camera because my fingers are all meaty. All right, um, I think I'm going to do the cheddar first because I don't mind if I get a little cheddar in my mushroom Swiss, but my family probably won't want the mushroom Swiss in their cheddar. So, so I think part of the issue with all those air bubbles I got before was because I was getting air, I was, I was putting this glob of meat on top and it was sealing as it pushed through, so I was, all that air was needing to go somewhere. So, all right, so here comes Cheddarwurst. Here we go, Good, wish me luck. Something's not right. I don't know if I got too much in there. 
or what? So I'm just going to twist this one. It's a little short, but twist it off while it's here. Oh, and look at that. I'm like at the end of that casing. So let's just tie that one off. All right. So the whole idea was to learn things. And I am learning things. So the issue I had where it was seeming clogged was because of the cheddar cheese. Uh, or at least it seemed like it. When I, pull, I pulled this whole thing off and there's just a big glob of cheddar cheese in there. So we'll see if it does it again. Um, maybe there's something, some special kind of cheese I need to use that won't, maybe, maybe getting the good stuff was a mistake. Oh, and I got, I don't want this, not there, there. Um, so I got that cleaned out and I was, since I was right at the end of the casing, I'm putting on another strip of casing here and that's where I learned something else. I, this time I started running the sausage through and I ran a little bit out. So this is all filled with sausage, so there's back pressure on it. So I don't have to hold this as I'm pulling the casing on. I can just ta-da. And then tie my little knot. I don't know. I assume I tie the knot now. If there's anybody that's done this more than me, is it better to wait and tie the knot at the end so I can get air bubbles out? I don't know. But here's, uh, so here's my first run. Not too schnabby. And I've got some more meat in here. Um, this is again the cheddar. So we're gonna see if we can't finish the cheddar. Switch over to the uh, mushroom Swiss. I wonder if the Swiss will cause the same issues. I don't know. We'll find out. So, here we go. pretty good if I do say so myself. I'm getting better at this. But that's the end of what I had for my cheddar. At least that's the end of the meat here. There's still going to be some down in there. So I'm just going to top it off with the mushroom Swiss. This one and probably even, maybe even the next one will still be cheddar. But we'll get this tucked in there. And this is definitely, this is definitely manageable by myself, but this would be far, far easier with a second set of hands. If I was doing any more volume than this, um, you know, I know some guys do like their whole, you know, they might do, uh, well, the Matt Moe's video, he did what? Uh, what'd you do, Matt? 80 pounds, 40 pounds? I think it was 40 pork, 40 venison. This is five pounds total. <laughs> so, yeah, I can see where having a couple extra sets of hands would be really helpful. But, let's finish up. Holy cow. Look at all that cheddar coming out. I wonder if I had a blob stuck in there again. So I know there's some meat in here yet, so I'm going to take this ring off. Pump this. Oh yeah, look at all that. Okay. Look at all that cheese. This, that whole glob, this whole chunk. Swiss cheese. So something, I'll have to figure something else out, something different with the cheese. 
Maybe next time I'll shred it instead of chopping it. Maybe that'll make a difference. But for now, I'm just going to use my finger to push through the sausage that was left in the tube here. <laughs> make this last cute little baby sausage at least a little bigger. of my casing off there. Tie this off. And voila! Brats! So what did I get? So this is <laughs> This started as a four and a half pound pork shoulder. Two, four, six, eight, ten, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty ish. If I knew better what I was doing, I'd have gotten twenty brats out of that. It's pretty good. It's about a quarter pound brat. I think that's about what to be expected. Um, cool. Yeah. Well, let me get cleaned up a little bit and then we'll wrap up and see. Yeah, see what we learned. Cool. That's good. All right. Well, pretty good. We got, I don't know, 20-ish brats out of the deal. I've got them out on the cookie sheet. I'm going to put them in the chest freezer and let them freeze tonight. Once they're frozen, I'll cut them apart and vacuum seal them and, and uh, save them. We'll probably have some for lunch tomorrow, I'm hoping. But... Uh, yeah, so I got quite a few brats. It worked pretty well. Uh, probably the part I'm most pleased about out of the whole thing. Uh, well, hopefully they'll taste good. But um, here's my, this is my first, uh, my first one that I stuffed. And I'll get you a close-up picture here. And it's not very good. But by the time you get down to these, close-up picture here. These are actually really nice. In fact, I would say this whole last string that I did look like professional brats. Um, so I'm very pleased. I think I got at least the stuffing part. I'm not going to say I've got it down, but I certainly got better. That's the whole goal, right? I got better. I learned. Um, so yeah, I'm very pleased. That's, that turned out well. We'll have some for lunch tomorrow, see how they taste. But here's some of the things I learned on my first run through. I had no idea what I was doing. I saw somebody, I saw Matt Mose on YouTube, to set YouTube do his venison sausage. I spent half an hour on Google and went for it. But so here's some things I learned. Um, if I'm going to do cheese in them again, which let's be honest, I'm going to put cheese in brats again. I'm not going to try to chunk it. I think I'm going to try to shred it next time. And I might, either that or maybe I'll, I don't know. Is it worth trying to just put bigger chunks through with the meat when I grind it the first time? I don't know. Those of you who have actually done this before, I mean, what do you do? Um, the issue I was having with the chunks of meat was they were clogging my my grinder. So in the future, next time I'm going to try to shred the cheese. Um, I learned to put some, uh, have the the filler nozzle partially full filled with sausage when you string the casings. Uh, makes it a lot easier to put the casings on. The second time I did the casings, I didn't use the oil, so I don't know that that's necessary. I mean, like the casings were wet. They were in water, so maybe that was enough. Um, we'll see how it tastes. This is just pork. Maybe it does need some beef in it. I don't know. We'll see. But but I'm excited. I, I, this turned out pretty good. It was a fun adventure. I had some fun with it. I've got um, plenty of all the spices left over. So if I want to do another batch, all I need is the pork. Um... I've even got extra casings, so I might see if they're good. We'll have some for lunch tomorrow, and if they're good, I might convince Gabriel that he wants to make some with me tomorrow. I think 
that's a wrap. We made some brats. We learned some, uh, learned a whole lot along the way. Got better at it as we went. I don't know what more I could ask for. It's a perfect project. I got a result. I can even eat my result, and I learned a bunch along the way. So, hey, thanks for coming along with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've done this before, if you've made brats and all of that before, please tell me, <laughs> tell me what I did wrong. What could I do better? What did I, you know, what did I do right? Give me some feedback. I'd, I'd love it. Um, like I said, I'd like to be able to keep going with this. Um, if you've never done this before, give it a try. I thought it was really easy. Uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, easy is the right word. It was easy. Uh, there's a few steps to it, and but I suspect it's pretty forgiving. I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll see. So, cheers. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts. Catch you next time.